Welcome to this lecture on human intelligences. This is step 13 of this Institute of Practical Learning course. We start by giving you a demonstration of using categories to analyze a particularly complex situation. It's called the PESS model. Then we move on to modeling using dialectics to position yourself within a quadrant of different possibilities. For some reason the camera started to go out of focus so we've it's pretty rubbish and we've done our absolute best to fix it but uh, so please bear with it I hope you can see your way through to picking out what's really important during this lecture because we didn't want to skip it. It's about providing you a way of analyzing your own personality and what kind of work is going to be suitable for you? What will you enjoy doing once you've completed your education and sought some kind of employment, or you're building your own business, or whatever else you decide to do with your life? Now, it's very hard for young people to understand themselves well enough to choose just the right path. Some people are blessed with a desire right from when they're kids to become a doctor or an airline pilot or whatever. But most of us, quite honestly, haven't got a clue. And it's not till we reach our maybe early 20s, that kind of age, or 19, 20, 21, that kind of age, before we start to have enough experience of the world to start getting a feeling of what we really want to do. And the idea of this lecture is to give you some tools with which to analyze yourself, your own thoughts, and your own behavior, so you can start homing in on what is going to suit you. And positioning the work you're doing at the moment, you may be doing a degree, or you may have started in a job, and revisiting that, and thinking carefully, is that the right path for you? And if you're happy with what you're doing, how can you optimize it? How can you extend out your experiences and behavior and be even happier than you are right now? And I hope you are happy. Now, just in case you're not, there's also a lot of material here which will help you understand perhaps why you're not happy. Maybe you are studying the wrong thing. Maybe you're meeting the wrong people. It could be all sorts of reasons. But using this approach of self awareness, you can definitely get yourself back on track and live a really good life because we live on a wonderful planet. People generally, 90% of people are really nice and really friendly. In fact, I'd say 95% of people. I don't know how many models I'm going to talk to you about, but, you know, as I say, I've got hundreds of them. And I'm going to come on to another one to do with personality types as opposed to knowledge types. Now, over here, the end, this my stuff's meant to be, oh, it's, you know, some people really like it. it it's, are you an emoter? Are you a feeler? And you, you probably know them. If not, you can always look up mass breaks on YouTube if you get yourself fun. Right, so let's move on to another model I use for helping people develop soft skills. It's still the same shape. So we've got online and another line. And as I say, rightly or wrongly, I call these dialectics. And when you've got two at right hand and girls to each other, I call it an opposed dialectic. Okay, let's start off with some people like to do with things, they like to learn and interact with stuff that's stable and known. They're kind of risk averse type people. So they want it to be safe, information that's known. Now, I, an awful lot of people around here in Santa Cruz, they do computer programming. They like to, some people like to work with known software languages and known packages, for example, applications. But they like to uh, use applications. Now, the other end of this scale is stuff that's new or on the way there. Sometimes it's called emerging. Now, you can apply this safe and known and new and emerging to all sorts of things. Maybe 
But personally, I have enjoyed the last 15, maybe even 20 years, working in what's called emerging markets. They were, they were called the BRICS. B-R-I-C-S, I think it was. It was Brazil, Russia, India, China, Latin America, generally, Latin, Latin Africa, the so-called Middle East. They don't like to be called Middle East. And so on. But they were all regarded as emerging markets because from a technology point of view, they didn't have established infrastructures. Personally, I, I personally like working where it's emerging markets because they adopt new technology far more quickly than countries where there's an established base of technology. All the companies have got a grip over the politics and the government and so on. And they slow the pace of they slow the pace of advance uh, down quite significantly. There's another model, as I'm here talking to you about this, another model called it's called PEST. A different it's, it's a bit of a sidetrack, but I feel like doing it anyway. So that's political, economic. Actually, while I'm doing this, I'm realizing we're working together to teach you soft skills. There is nothing wrong with me starting to talk to you about the world of work right now. So yes, I want to talk to you about a model to use for what type of person you are. But at the same time, if we relate this to the world of business, I don't think there's any harm in that at all. Political, economic, social, and technical. So a given country will have a bunch of attitudes and established situations for the politics, the economics, which is like how much money is there in that particular country to spend, in my case, on infrastructure and new technologies, the social aspects, are they, do they feel like spending it? I mean, I did a gig in uh, Saudi Arabia, for example, and it was dripping with money. The logistics was difficult because it's a huge country, it's a long, long the desert, but they did want to upgrade a very poor social infrastructure with clinics and hospitals and stuff like that. And they wanted to upgrade it, so they wanted to improve this aspect of life. But in terms of technology, it, they didn't have much in the way of technology, and so they, but they did have the money, and they were ready to spend it on technology. But clearly, if they were going to make the technology work, they were going to need uh, quite a bit of help. And training was an opportunity for them to have training. So that's called a pest analysis. But again, people, because I, I liked emerging markets where the, the politics, the economics, the social and technical were changing. Not too much, because I did a gig in um, a couple of countries, actually, and, you know, no sooner I walked out the door than they had probably revolutions and stuff. So that's a bit of a waste of time. There's also a, a development of this, called, it's called PESL. Now, a pestle is a, a container that you have a, or a thing called a mortar, and you, you can grind things up in it. It just happens to be a, a word in the West. It doesn't really mean anything in, in this aspect, but pestle, what you do is you add L-E there. This stands for legal, and this stands for ethical. So you may think, well, the legal environment and the ethical environment should be pretty closely coupled to each other. But in a lot of these emerging markets, they're not. The legal environment is, well, it might be quite corrupt. So part of the analysis before you engage in a project with a given country is, you know, is, is what we're doing ethical? Or, or is it in a way by our Western standards, we, we just shouldn't be touching it at all? And it's emotive, but I don't know why it's coming to my mind. But let's say it's a slave trade or something like that. You may say, well, what a great business to be in. You know, we need, we, we can ship. This is awful. What I'm doing, I don't know. I'm trying to give you an example of something that you just wouldn't touch with a barge ball because it's not ethical. Um, mind you, what, 300 years ago? It was ethical, and in America, 
less than 300 years ago, I think it was ethical. So anyway, Passel, another model, not actually spot on relevant, but I felt like doing it. I think it's hopefully I'm engaging you now in the, the purpose of all this is to get you ready for the world of work and being able to think in an analytical way. When I say think analytically, I'm introducing yet another concept there, which I will do in red because it's really, really important. We'll come on to it later. And it's, it's, I call it CAT, but it's critical analytical thinking. So these models are to help you think analytically, you, to use critical analytical thinking. And the essence of analytical thinking is you must be able to divide things up into meaningful categories. And this pencil thing, P E S T L E. That gives you one, two, three, four, five, six categories in which to analyze a country for whether you're going to spend your time running a business meeting to help them change your infrastructure. And whether at the end of the day, whoever's paying you to be there, whoever's sponsoring the event, is, is actually going to achieve anything right. Or is it just a talking shop? Which in itself can stop people being at war and killing each other, but it's not the kind of thing I was involved in most. Of I have gone and said a few arguments, but it's not my main line of business. I wasn't really talking about people at all. That was talking about business and analyzing business. So we want to say, what I'm trying to get to is what kind of person are you? What are your preferences for the world of work that you are going to get involved in? Are you kind of down this end? You like things to be known and predictable and solid and safe. There's nothing wrong with that. Or are you more attracted to the new? In central schools, everybody's completely bonkers about things called startups. Anyway, are you the sort of person that, right or wrong, for good or evil, perhaps, is, is attractive to new situations in which there may be they make the new situations are often opportunity rich, but there's more risk. Okay, so that's one di one aspect of the dialectic. Do you like it to be safe, or do you like are you prepared to take a certain amount of risk? I mean, this, this is the same with money. If you had, let's say, you had uh, hundred thousand dollars or something, what would you do? Buy something safe. What is safe to buy these days? I, I would say gold. Um, or would you would you buy shares in a, a sort of a new startup type company? Would you put it into something like that? So it's very much what kind of person you are in that respect. Now, so then the other thing is, well, what's the other? What's this? What's the other useful dialectic? And what I suggest to you, if you're trying to analyze what kind of person you are, is are you naturally drawn to people or actually drawn to working with things? So up here is people and down here is things. There's other words, it could be stuff. In the, in the computer world, it could be code and so on. So the, the people here, where I'm working in this shared office space, they are banging out software using known languages and making small changes to... If they're here in this space, they want something known and safe, and they don't engage in eye contact, they don't talk to you. They, it's just stuff, safe things. Now, some other people in this workspace, as far as I can see, they're off the scale in terms of what? I don't think they're in the real world at all. They are highly innovative people who are beyond my comprehension. And they are into people to some extent, but they are highly, highly innovative. So write down in your life book your attitude to risk and reward, to people and things, and where you are comfortable working with things like programming or making stuff. Party on! Decide, use this way of thinking to help you choose 
a better career and the sort of job you want to go for.